What's up guys, it's Miles, and first thing, before I even start this video, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to look at my videos. We finally hit a thousand subscribers, and I just want to thank you guys for all the support, all the love. It truly does mean a lot to me, and I don't take that for granted. So thank you guys so much. I'll be doing a Q&A video, so if you have any questions, you can put that in this video in the comments below. Let's go ahead and get started today, and I want to talk about the types of dorms at Ohio State. I know that this is a thing that I always wanted to know before I went to school here. It was really hard to really know what a lot of these dorms look like. And today we're gonna to be talking about the types of dorms at Ohio State. I'm gonna explain them, I'm gonna rank them. I know for me, before I went to school here, I didn't know what my dorm looked like pretty much at all. They don't really do the best job of showing pictures of every single dorm and what it truly looks like. So today what I'm gonna do is go through the different dorms, the types that you have, and I'm gonna rank them. The first type of dorm that I wanna talk about are the really old dorms on campus. These are the type of dorms where you say the name where you live and then someone's gonna be like, oh, like, I'm so sorry, or they're gonna look at you and be like, that sucks. And honestly, that's pretty valid response. That is a pretty valid response for these dorms. These dorms look pretty old and outdated for the most part, and what characterizes these dorms, I would say, is the fact that every single dorm that's really old is pretty unique. Honestly, the room setup that you get in the floor plan is pretty much like a crapshoot. You really don't know what you're going to get when you go to these types of dorms. Well, my first year at Ohio State, I lived in Mac Hall. Yes, the infamous Mac Hall. Doesn't have the best ratings, we'll say. But anyway, that's where I lived. And I can tell you this much, every single room on my floor was unique. It was different than the other. And that could work in your favor, but it also cannot work in your favor. I lucked out. I was in a triple, believe it or not. I didn't even know that Mac Hall had triples, but I was in a triple. Me and my roommates, we all had a small little common area there's even a fireplace in there which is pretty nice cool decoration didn't work but the fact that we had it was cool and then we had that small common area and then after that we had a bedroom a small bedroom and we had three beds in there to sleep so that was like a setup where I live but I had people who had totally different setups with their rooms in Mac Hall and it's like that with a lot of these older dorms because I think they were made out of time or there just wasn't really that many regulations on the floor plans and things like that these types of dorms are missing at least one thing so it becomes a pick or poison type of thing if you have choice over where you live some dorms don't have AC like mine Mac Hall I didn't have AC all my freshman year and I won't lie to you it does suck but it only sucks for probably the first three months of the year when it's actually hot once you get past that, you won't even have a problem with getting too hot pretty much for the rest of the year. Some dorms don't have laundry. I'll be like walking, I'll see kids with baskets and they may be going to another dorm to do their laundry because their own dorm doesn't have access to that. And the last thing I would say is pretty common is some dorms don't even have like a common area on the floor or whatever. So those are all the things that you can expect to maybe not have if you do get a dorm in this category. This next dorm type is coming in at number two and this is the classic residence hall. What this basically means is if you live in a dorm like this, it's going to be your standard double. So your dorm room is going to be two people sharing one room together. Honestly, you usually have everything that you need to make you feel comfortable here. So you'll have AC more than likely. There's all these pretty much have AC. Not only that, but you'll have like a little mini fridge, microwave, like everything you need to be comfortable essentially. I will say that you really can't go wrong with these dorms. Like out of all the dorms on Ohio State's campus that are like the classic, you know, double, I've never really been in one that I've been like, oh, this is like disgusting or something like that. Some examples of these dorms are really good would be if you're talking about South Campus, Smith Steve, really nice dorm. Uh, Parks Rally as well, really nice dorm, traditional layout. And then if you're going North Campus, you have places like Scott, uh, Nosker, Blackburn, they all have really good doubles and it's really nice to live in. Something really cool about living in a classic residence hall on this campus is that a lot of people who live in these dorms want to meet people and there's a really strong sense of community. So I know that every single time I go visit people at these places, the doors are always open. People do want to meet people, especially for that first week of school. These dorms always have a common area on the floor, so there will be a big space for everybody on the floor to hang out together, get to know people. So, like I said, these dorms are pretty much perfect if you're a freshman and you want to meet people. 
people on campus. You really can't go wrong with these. Now, this next type of dorm is, in my opinion, the best type of dorm you can have on Ohio State's campus, and that is what I call the modern suite style dorm. The way that these dorms work is that you have a private common room and you have a private bathroom, and you share those with not every single modern suite style dorm will have access to a common room, but almost all of them do. Honestly, to not have a common room is not common at all if you do get a suite style dorm. If you don't have a common room, you'll just be sharing a bathroom together. So you'll have like two bedrooms, and then what will link those two bedrooms together will be a bathroom that you share. And it's still private, it's not a communal bathroom. But most do have common areas. These dorms do come furnished. They come with a couch, they come with a leather, or should I say pleather chair. They have a table, and the table has chairs as well there's other amenities that you get with these type of dorms and the list kind of goes on with that and then you have the bedrooms now the way that this works is these modern suites can have up to eight people if you have eight people you're gonna have four bedrooms and there will always be two people in each bedroom so if you have six people it's three bedrooms people two people in those bedrooms and lastly you can have four people two bedrooms and you share a common area now in my personal opinion I think that if you have four people that is honestly what you want because as you'll learn in college the more people you live with the more chances you have of just problems arising. This is something that happens, so definitely having four people sharing a common area is perfect. You have two bedrooms, and usually if you have four people and you get along with them, it's absolutely perfect. It's a good time for everybody. Now, I lived in a four-man suite, actually, and I absolutely loved it, and the reason I liked it so much is that when you have less people, the space feels bigger, and not only that, but like the place I lived, it was actually a, like a big common area. It was honestly probably one of the bigger ones on campus, and because I lived on the top floor of Nosker, we had high ceilings as well, which made it really nice. It felt more spacious, and just to give you an idea of how big the room is, we were able to fit a full-size Christmas tree in our common area. That's how much space we had. If you guys are really interested in seeing this in more detail, I did make a video about my dorm and did a dorm tour, so I'll put a link down below for that, and also I'll put a card up here that you can click on to check out that video. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to a modern suite on Ohio State's campus is definitely the location. If you get one of these modern suites they almost always are located really nicely the one I lived in was on North Campus and that location whoo that location was so good like to give you an idea of what was around us, my dorm and the dorms that were nearby were surrounded first off by a dining hall. The biggest one on campus actually is right to her left, so that dining hall was right there. And then right outside of my dorm, like once you walk out, was the new rec center. And the rec center is really nice actually. I highly recommend you check it out, but the rec center is literally outside of Nasker's door. So like I would walk out, it would take me not even a minute to get to that rec center. And like in my daily life video, you can actually check that out. Like it really took me like 30 seconds to get there. And then on top of that, you also have a green space to hang out with your friends, play frisbee and stuff like that, catch a ball and stuff. So the location is absolutely beautiful if you do live in one of these modern suites. Same thing goes for South Campus as well. I just thought something really quickly that I want to mention when it comes to housing, and it's that definitely choosing location is very important. And for myself, I had the option to live in a modern suite South Campus called Reslin 10th, or I could live in Nosker, which was North Campus. I ended up deciding to live North Campus, and this is something that you'll see a lot of second years do. I don't know why for certain, but a lot of second years definitely decide to make the move from south to north. I love south campus and it's actually my favorite part of campus, but even I decide to move north campus and the reason for that is because on north campus things are a lot more convenient. There's a fantastic second year community on north campus. Like, I don't know what it is and I don't know what kind of started the trend of a lot of like second years going to north campus, but pretty much everybody there almost who lives in those dorms is a second year and it's really cool because when you do move there, you know, there's a cool sense of community there. I guess after the the first year of school you kind of learn a little bit and it's cool to be around people who like are in like a similar path as you you know they've done it one year they know what's going on and you can make some cool friendships that way but yeah so something i noticed over the last few years is that a lot of people will kind of make that move from south campus to north campus when they become a second year if they can but that's the end of my rant i don't think i have anything else to talk about when it comes to that the last type of dorm i want to talk about is honestly an outlier and because of that i decided not to really rank it in my ranking when i was making this video but i'm obviously still going to explain it for you guys because some of you guys might actually be living in this and this would be called a scholars type of dorm setup so a scholars dorm is essentially where people who are in scholar programs or have a certain scholarship may live and they have the option to live in these places now these are on interesting parts of campus and they're located in the areas that you wouldn't expect people to really live which honestly makes them cool to me and I've been in a few and they're really spacious people have bedrooms and there's 
kitchens within these like townhouses and stuff like that so you can cook and honestly it's more adult type living you could say um, than a typical college student may have living in a dorm. An example of this would be Scholars West or Scholars East. Some of these places are named after people so when you see them you really can't miss them anymore but they're really interesting places to live and like I said this may apply to you if you are in one of those scholars programs and you can easily look that up if you know the name of your scholars group but that is what that whole entire situation kind of looks like and I would recommend honestly if you have the opportunity to live in one do it because I would want to know what that's like too I just want to go ahead and give you guys this information because I wish someone made a video like this detailing the types of like residences and what you can kind of expect with them when you go on campus for the first time or even if you're trying to find housing for the second year. So that's my video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you once again for helping me hit 1,000 subscribers. That is so crazy and I cannot thank you enough for that. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel and consider leaving a like if you want to. Thank you so much for all your love and support and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Hopefully I don't get stung by a bee. Peace.